involved in ACRL, and this webinar will be sponsored by the ACRL Membership Committee. So thank you so much for, once again, for attending. Um, I will be hosting um, for the start of this webinar. My name is Rachel Minkin. I'm Head of Reference Services at Michigan State University, and I'm an ACRL Membership Committee member, um, and I have been for a while. I'd like to thank Dr. Stephen Bell um, and his work group for putting this all together for us. Uh, also, lots of thanks to Mary, Bain, Mary Jane Petrosky, to Allison Payne, um, Mariel, who you're going to meet later today, and of course, Alois Sharp at ALA, who's helping in the wings. She's the one who's doing our great sound checks and everything. Um, to, the reason why we're doing this webinar um, is to encourage you and to help you in the volunteer process. Um, with ACRL. So we know that you're busy, uh, you're juggling your duties at work, you've got home things going on, so we want to help make evident the value of volunteering with ACRL, why we think it's important and all the things that you can do. We want to personalize this process for you, we want to familiarize you with the nuts and bolts of how the process works, uh, we want to make you feel confident in your ability to volunteer. We want you to find a home here with us in ACRL and to understand more about how volunteering with us might help your career as an academic librarian. So that might be at whatever level you're at. You could be a starting librarian, you could have been a librarian for years and years, so wherever you are. So to that end, um, Alois had pointed out the chat box that's in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Um, please feel free to start typing questions in there as they come up, and we're going to try to keep an eye on that. We will have a question and answer time at the end as well. So if you don't get your question in right now, don't worry, we're going to have time for that. So our agenda for today, um, I'll cover some introductions. We're going to talk about ACRL organizational structure and then the appointment processes for the division level, level committees as well as section level committees. So those are two different things. Um, we also have interest in discussion groups and we're going to talk about those as well. We'll do some questions and we'll do a little evaluation at the end there as well. Now our panelists for today, we've got three who are joining us. You'll see their names under panelists. Um, Catherine Soner, who is chair of Israel Appointments Committee, is going to be with us first. Uh, she will transition to Kristen Tullivan, who is our co-chair for the ACRL European Studies section. Uh, she's also a member of ACRL Publications Coordinating Committee, so what does it look like to be in two different committees? Um, and our very own Mariel Colbert, who is new for us, and she's our program coordinator for member services at ACRL, and we are thankful to the work that she's been doing for us. We just had her up and running right away. Let's see. So the structure in a nutshell, um, there are tons and tons and tons of committees and things that you can do within ACRL. Now, this is interesting. It works out to about 500 positions per year, but we're looking at 34 division level committees, and those are dedicated towards um, supporting the strategic plan of ACRL. We have over 300 section committees that are based out of those 16 sections. So all of those need help. Um, we have 42 discussion group conveners that we need, um, and 17 interest group conveners. And I'm sorry, actually, my numbers are a little bit off. I think we need 20 and 21. I'm sorry about that. Um, and then beyond that, you probably know this, that at your state level, there are ACRL chapters, and your ACRL chapters at home also need uh, volunteer works. So there are tons and tons of folks um, I'm sorry, of positions that are open. Now, the thing is, is that we are on rotating cycles, but we're still looking at about 500 positions or so that are open each year. Ooh, it looks like we have 66 people registered for this meeting. This is fantastic. I'm happy that you guys all could be here. Now, the next thing I want to show you on the screen is the directory of leadership. And the, there's an important reason for this. I hadn't thought of that at first, but it came up in our discussions that, boy, how would you know what committee you would want to look at. How would you know who to contact to ask more about a committee? Um, if you just Google ACRL Directory of Leadership, you will get this screen. This is what comes up. Um, good librarian skills, this is how I did it. Um, under this list, there is a link that says committees, and when you click on that link, you can see the committees that are available, and you can see who's currently serving on those committees. From there, please feel free to email one of us and say, hey, what is it that you do? How do you do it? Can I do that too? Because we probably want you. 
Now there is a volunteer timeline that you should know about. Um, some of you have maybe already seen that Allison Payne, who is um, out of ALA, that she has sent out an email calling for volunteers. Now that form, um, it's an online form, and it does need to be completed by February 15th in order to put you in the next iteration of volunteers. There are, um, the, the decisions will start to be made, people will be chosen, and that usually ends by about May 2018, so we've got some time in there. Um, and then you would begin your term on July 1 of 2018. Now for more information, I have, um, we have a link to a, a CRL article, a CNRL article that came out um, just a couple, like a little bit ago, a couple weeks ago, on how you can learn more about volunteering. So there's always that as well. Now again, um, just some things of note. Uh, we do limit folks to five years of consecutive service on each committee. So although you may love a committee, there is some time where we need to ask you to step away so that we can open up some space for new folks. We're also asking that members are not going to hold more than uh, three appointments at any one time. And again, it's for the same reason. We want all of us to have a chance and we want to make sure that we're getting everyone's ideas in there. We have tw about 1,200 volunteer opportunities, but because of these staggered sort of appointments, there's about 500 appointments that are open every year. Now, there are tons of us and 500 appointments, so sometimes the math works better for us, sometimes not. Um, you are not officially appointed to any position until you accept your appointment. So you would get an email that was like, do you accept? And you have to reply back, yes, I accept. Um, Katie in the chat, Katie Gibson, who is also um, a member of our uh, committee, suggested starting with the state chapters and um, as a way to get involved. I, Katie, I did that too um, and found it was a great way to get involved and it sort of was a nice stepping stone into larger ACRL, more national committees. Katie with a big wave and a big hi from everybody. Hi, Katie. So, Lots of information so far. Now that's sort of an, over, uh, an overview. So what I'd like to do now is transition um, to Catherine. Catherine, I'm going to pass the ball to you to talk a little bit more about divisional work. Let's see if I do this correctly. Catherine, I think you have it. I think it's you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Catherine Sater, and I am the Associate Dean for Research and User Services out here at the University of Utah. Um, I'm also the chair for the ACRL Appointments Committee. So my job today will be to walk you through the actual website volunteer form. Um, and let's see, I'm having trouble actually moving the slide. There we go. <laughs> Okay then, so this is the link um, to the ACRL 2017 volunteer form. If you don't want to remember this entire long thing, just go straight to the ACRL homepage. One of the marketing panels is, is called Engage with ACRL. And if you click on that, you will get right to this link. Okay, so imagine that we've clicked on the link. Uh, you will be asked to log in uh, if you haven't already, so once you've completed that process, this is a form you will see. Notice in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, ALA is what is highlighted. That's because ALA is our parent organization, and if you are a member of ACRL, you are also a member of ALA. Um, and just to remind you again for context, ALA is the top of this organizational chart, and there are 16... Oh, 11 divisions, ALA divisions, 11 of them, ACRL is one of those divisions. Um, and to provide an even more meaningful experience, ACRL is also then split into 15 different sections. So there are committees on the division level, ACRL, and there are also committees on the section level. Sections might include things like science and technology section, and instruction section. And I'll get to those in a minute. But first, let's start with ACRL. So once you're on the screen, go to where ALA is highlighted and click on that down arrow. When you do that, you will be given a choice to select ACRL. And the screen is not moving again. There we go. Okay, so this is what that'll look like. So once you click on that down menu, you will be brought to ACRL. 
And just to give you a little background uh, context for me, I've been a volunteer for at least one ACRL division level or section level committee since 1995. And I've done that because it has been a, a huge benefit to me. Um, I've been given the opportunity to work with diverse groups of people toward a common goal. I network with colleagues. There's been leadership opportunities. And just as importantly, I've been able to give back to this profession that has given me so much. So let's select ACRL. And the screen is still having trouble moving. I'm not sure what's, um, oh, here, let me try this. There we go. All right, so once you select ACRL, you are brought to this lovely page. There's a lot of information in very small type. What I want to direct your attention to is the link on the right side of this form. It's called Directory of Leadership. And you just heard about that. I highly recommend that you walk through that looking at the committees um, because you can find out the charge of the committee. What's it supposed to do? It's also the place where, as you were told, you can find information about the person who currently chairs the committee. Um, and one way to increase your chances to getting a committee appointment is to contact that chair and to connect with them about what uh, the work of the committee is. You can ask them things like, what challenges or issues has your committee addressed over the past year? Are you looking for any particular expertise? By making that connection, you make the chair more aware of who you are. The second way is to be selective. So as you look through the committees, ask yourself, what is my current role and my current responsibilities? Is there a good match for a committee that would match up with those roles and responsibilities? What are my professional interests? And where might I make a contribution? You don't have to have deep experience to volunteer. For example, program committees at the division or section level are an excellent place to start. People who are newer to the profession are very welcome on any committee and help provide another point of view. So the point is here, be intentional about what you volunteer for. You can select multiple committees, but we do recommend that you select a committee, but probably not more than three committees, that would be particularly meaningful to you. Once you've done your research on what committees would be of interest, continue with the volunteer form and you can just click on Next. And then you're brought to the many division level committees that are available to you. Notice that most of these committee names start with ACRL. That's how you, know, how you know that you are at the division level. There's no section mentioned here. So these are all committees that work at the division level of ACRL. Uh, see. OK, so once you've uh, made your selections, you click on Next, and it brings you to this form and that with these big empty boxes where we're asking you questions that are going to be important to the ACRL Appointments Committee. The first three questions, where else have you volunteered, list other uh, appointments or offices, any ALA appointments, even that further one with the state and regional appointments, these are important because ALA does have a rule that you can only be on three committees at any one time. The state and regional appointments are also important to us because it will give us an indication as to your experience on a state or regional level that might have uh, profound impact on a national level. The next questions are about you. List your education and experience. Why are you interested? What other pertinent information would you like to share with the committee? Once you've filled out that form, just click on Next, and it will bring you to this last slide. This is the moment where you get a chance to review the committees that you signed up for. You can, of course, go back and change your mind. But if you're satisfied with that, click on Submit. So that's the division level committees. Again, as part of that directory of leadership, notice that there is part way down highlighted the word sections. And when you get there, that ACRL volunteer information and form is available to you. When you click on that, again, you come back to this very familiar form. Notice that what is highlighted now is IS. 
the instruction section. Instruction section is a part of ACRL, and the pull-down menu actually gives you an indication that this section belongs to ACRL, so you won't get confused. So let's imagine that we've selected instruction section, click on next, and then you get a whole list of committees that are available to you to volunteer for as a part of the instruction section. Notice again that the names of these committees now say ACRL slash IS. This tells you that you are no longer on the division level anymore. You are now at the instruction section level of committees. You select the committee or committees that you're interested in and click on Next. And again, you're asked to submit. So I'm at the next piece where I'm just going to tell you that we also have a whole number of uh, interest groups. Now these interest groups are particularly designed to address, um, to address emerging needs. Um, they're short term, they discuss issues and uh, provide members with an opportunity to do some problem solving. Mariel Colbert, one of our panelists, will provide a bit more information about interest groups and discussion groups in a few minutes. But that's all I have for you today in terms of how to actually do this. So I hope that has been useful to you. And um, I'm now going to pass the ball to Kristen. Uh, so Kristen, I'm going to take this ball and zoom it over to you. And now it should stick. Thank you, Catherine. So, um, again, my name is Kristen Tottleben. I'm the Modern Languages and Cultures Librarian at the University of Rochester. I'm also the ACRL European Studies Section Co-Chair with Lana Suglasnova and ACRL uh, Publications Coordinating Committee uh, member. And so earlier we were talking um, about the different parts of ACRL and so the what and that and, and how and um, Catherine and Rachel talked a little bit about um, why to volunteer as well and I I wanted to talk a little bit about that too so so why why get more involved in a in section level for instance um, committee of ACRL so ACRL offers about 15 sections um, for looking into uh, individualizing your experiences with specific disciplines or different um, different types of work you may be doing or things that you would you would want to learn more about to meet other people who do similar things or or types of skills that you're aspiring to uh, to learn more about and do. Uh, just like that article from CNRL News, three verbs to describe getting involved and the, the benefits are connecting, contributing, and collaborating. So within these sections, you, as Catherine had mentioned, you can, you can go to the roster to see who's, who, is, who are the current officers, who are the current chairs. You can look at the website to see the the individual charges of each committee, of the discussion groups within those sections to see which things you would be interested in. Um, but also, I mean, there's a lot of benefit with getting involved with others within these sections. It's, the committees tend to be a little bit smaller and depending on the types of interests that you're looking into, uh, for instance, when I started my job seven years ago, I, I started attending meetings for what is now the European Studies section to learn more about collection development, to learn more about other librarians who do similar jobs that I, that I have and what, how do they do that and uh, just a way to get to know other ways of doing things, ways of connecting with my faculty and students. It was, it's been very helpful to not only ask for advice and have a network of colleagues that I can call upon, but also a way to give back to the, li to, um, the li academic librarian community and to share projects together to help others with their professional development. And it's been also a nice place to uh, gain leadership experiences. 
So um, especially, for instance, early on in, in your career, it, it's a nice way to get that practice of project management, um, working, uh, working on um, programs or convening a discussion group, contributing to others' professional development as well and learning together. So it's, it can be very rewarding. So some of the options for volunteering within a uh, section would be, um, for instance, a committee or a task force member or chair of that committee. And I would say as well, again, um, as Catherine mentioned, you, you, when you're volunteering, choose intentionally what it is that you're interested in. If you have more questions about it beyond the charge, Catherine also gave some great questions as well of uh, example things that you may ask. But also um, just ask them, you know, could I be involved and, and what other what other types of things do you all discuss? What are the current projects you're working on? I'm, you know, I'm very excited about that. I'd like to participate in that. Can I attend the meetings? Is there a virtual meeting? So we're, we're always looking for more volunteers and it, it's really great to build your professional network and just know other people that you can call upon to ask questions. Um, so for expectations, so, th so there's also discussion group conveners. So depending on the structure of your section, uh, whatever committees and discussion groups that that section has, has voted on or decided to have, um, that's something to, to look at as well to see which, which committee in particular might you be interested in. Um, sometimes even just seeing, asking if there are any gaps, if you're interested in the particular section and you might be surprised. Um, I had started by volunteering as a member in their S's um, Vendor Relations Committee and, and then I became chair the next year and I, it was surprising because I, I didn't initially think that I would like that and I actually really enjoyed it and I, I learned a lot. So sometimes you can have surprises and you can meet a lot of people along the way and it, it can be very beneficial. So um, there can also, you could also be a member at large and basically a member at large represents the general, the membership of that section and this person is also part of the executive committee where the chair and the vice chair and the secretary are there and this person is also is a voting person. They can vote on things when decisions are being made during executive committee meetings during ALA. Um, there's also the, the secretary role, which this person takes the, records the notes for the executive committee and for the general membership meetings. Um, so, and, and secretary and member at large expectations can vary among different sections. Um, so I would also recommend asking the chair about that or looking on their, on the ACRL website or on, if, if that section has a particular website of its own um, outside of ACRL to see what those expectations are. And if, again, if you have questions, you, you can, um, I would recommend asking the chair to see, you know, what are, what are the expectations, what's the involvement, um, do you, do the, does this committee meet virtually? So that, that's kind of the, the way to, to get um, more informed about those roles. Um, for responsibilities of committee members, so Again, you have to be a member of ALA and the section in order to be a part of a committee or a discussion group as a convener or a member. Uh, attend meetings in person or virtually. So a lot of committees meet virtually. So that's a very good question as well. Um, I know there are a lot of people who, who attend one ALA a year or they aren't able to attend 
an uh, ALA conference for, for you know, like next year, for instance, if a person, if a librarian can't attend a conference next year, there still are ways to get involved where you would meet virtually to help with uh, projects um, and meet virtually to work on those projects with other committee members. So, and I would also say if you, as you're working in a committee and you be, if, if you decide that you would like to be a chair of a committee, make sure that you're delegating work to other committee members and that you're sharing that work and that you follow up with them because it also gives them that experience and it's, in, it, it's good leadership experience, but it's also informing other members of the section on the project and giving them an opportunity basically to, to gain experience as well. And so I, so I really um, highly recommend that and it helps build, your, build community within the section as well. I would, so there's the expectation of course to participate fully in the work of the committee. So respond to emails promptly, um, do your best to attend those meetings, to attend meetings virtually or online. Um, very few committees have um, conference attendance as a requirement. Um, these are some of the exceptions. So local arrangements where you need to be there, conference program planning, so for ALA, for that annual program, uh, executive committees, so they need to meet in person. And I would, again, I would, I would ask as part of the responsibilities for a volunteer, do, do, does this committee generally meet virtually? Are there, do they meet in person? So it, it, it's good to ask those kinds of questions so that you can make a commitment that's appropriate for your work schedule and for your ability to, um, basically for your schedule and, and whether you attend or not. So even if you don't attend ALA, you can still get involved. So again, this is um, a, a page that Catherine had showed about the committee volunteer form. So you would, um, early, early on you would click on ACRL and then it would have you scroll down to choose the section you want. For instance, this is the instruction section. And um, as a member, as you may know, um, when, you, when you do renew, become a member of ALA and ACRL, you can select as many sections as you like. So in this case, I mean, you, you choose the section that you like and then it, it burrows down into the committee and discussion group level. Um, Again, you can go to the ACRL website. Uh, you can go to their particular, the section particular websites to see their charges. Um, if there's any notes there of past committee meetings, who's involved, who you can contact, like the chair of a committee to ask about projects, or if you have a, um, an idea or something that you would like to see, that's all we, um, asking about that, like that's another way, kind of a conference, uh, conversation starter. So again, um, as mentioned before, customize your responses to the position. So again, intentionally choosing, because then it helps give um, the appointments folks an idea of your interests and um, so that they can choose thoughtfully on, on who to appoint because it, it's very, um, and then also helps you with spending your time the best way that you can and the things that you're interested in. Um, and keep volunteering. So you never know where you're gonna, I mean you can volunteer for different committees and um, sometimes you learn things you don't expect to learn and it can be really a rewarding experience and you meet really great people along the way. Uh, other ways to get involved. So beyond section level committees and discussion groups and ACRL wide committees, there are uh, 
section publications, you can participate in discussion forums, um, virtual or at ALA annual, um, the conference programs. Uh, one way to get to know a section as well, if you're able to attend some of the, some of the meetings for a if a committee meeting is open to anybody, if it if it doesn't stay closed in the bullet in the not bulletin but in the schedules, you can you can attend and just see what it's like, um, see if it's something that you're interested in. You can a lot of the sections have social media like pages um, accounts like for Twitter or Facebook, um, so. And, and, and a lot of the, the listservs as well, to my understanding, I mean, at least for European Studies section, you don't have to be a member to join that listserv to get a sense of that network and those, the types of questions that are asked and what kinds of issues are people facing, you know, and that they need help with or what kinds of programs are they advertising to have for the, for the conference. So there's lots of ways to kind of get the general sense or the vibe of a section and the type of work they're doing or just to get a sense to like how you want to be involved and what kinds of things you would like to get out of the, the work. And so, and, and also attending informal gatherings. It's another, it's a great way to meet the members and just informally ask them about the committees and the type of work they do and it's, it can give you a lot of insight and you can meet a lot of great people and if anything you can definitely expand your professional network and and it helps you it helps you get a sense of what other people are doing in the profession and it can help you contribute to the profession as well so thank you I'm gonna pass the ball over to Mariel Thank you, Kristen. Um, thank you, Rachel and Catherine also. Um, so yes, so we've talked a little bit about interest groups and discussion groups already. Um, and so today I'm going to be talking to you about the details of both of those um, interest groups and discussion groups and some of the responsibilities that come with serving as a leader <clears throat> in either of those. Oh, Kristen, could you pass me the ball? Oh, oh, thank you, Kristen. Okay. So interest groups are official membership units of ACRL, but there's no cost to join on your ACRL membership form. Um, Interest groups require a three-year leadership commitment, and in the spring, we have a call for volunteers. Um, the formal positions for interest groups are incoming convener, convener, and past convener. Um, so that's essentially like the three-year leadership commitment that's involved. Um, interest groups may create informal working groups, and they also may sponsor annual conference programs. So the responsibilities of an interest group convener are to schedule and promote meetings of the interest group. Um, they submit meeting agendas and minutes to the ACRL staff, which would be me. <laughs> um, and the interest group convener moderates email lists and online communities or appoints a moderator to do so. The interest group convener would submit an annual plan for excellence report in July. And they can also petition for interest group continuance if the group is up for renewal. So you can renew that. Um, the interest group convener also serves as the communities of practice assembly, or COPA. And they select incoming conveners for the next term. So at the same time, you can also have co-conveners. Um, but yeah, for the next term, you would select the new incoming convener. 
Um, and finally, incoming and past conveners may be involved as little or as much as possible or wanted or needed. So this is just a list of ACRL's current interest groups. Um, so we have the Academic Library Services to Graduate Students. We have Academic Library Services to International Students, Access Services, African American Studies Librarians, Asian, African, and Middle Eastern Studies, Digital Badgets, Digital Scholarship Centers, Health Sciences, Image Resources, Institutions institutional research, um, librarianship in for-profit educational institutions, library information science education, um, library marketing and outreach, reader's advisory, residency, technical services, and universal accessibility. Um, so all of these interest groups are up and running right now. And you can get involved with those. So ACRL's discussion groups are a bit different um, in that they're informal and they're a flexible way to discuss current issues. Um, so yeah, they're the most informal structure that we have as there's no official membership and you can self-subscribe to all of the listservs. Um, there's only a one-year commitment for the convener with an option to recommit or pass the torch. Um, and the call for volunteers is in the spring for discussion groups, as it is for interest groups. Um, discussion groups must meet at least once a year, either in person at the ALA conference, ALA annual conference, or virtually. Um, discussion groups do not sponsor annual conference programs, but they can have forums that include presentations. Um, one requirement of discussion groups is they have to meet, and if they don't, they dissolve and become inactive. Oh, this is not changing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so some of the responsibilities of a discussion group convener include to schedule and promote the meetings of the discussion group, and to decide on meeting topics for the discussion group, to moderate the email list and the online community for the discussion group, and to spark and moderate discussion on email lists and during meetings. Um, so like Interest groups, discussion groups can have co-conveners, um, kind of to help moderate and like take on some of those responsibilities. So the current ACRL discussion groups are the assessment discussion group, balancing baby and book, continuing education and professional development, the copyright discussion group, first year experience discussion group, Heads of Public Services, International Perspectives on Academic and Research Libraries, Leadership, Learning Commons Discussion Group, Library and Information Science Collections Discussion Group, um, Library Support, Media Resources, um, MLA International, New Members Discussion Group, Personnel, Administrators and Staff Development Discussion Group, Philosophical, Religious, and Theological Studies, Popular Cultures, Scholarly Communication, Student Retention, and Undergraduate Librarians. Um, you can be subscribed to more than one of these listservs at a time. Um, so that's a pretty complete overview of what discussion and interest groups are. Um, but if you have any questions on how to get involved or how to form a discussion or interest group, um, please don't hesitate to contact me at mcolbert at ala.org. Or you can call me at 312-280-5285. And I'll put my email address in the chat box just so everyone can have it after the slide is gone.
Okay, thank you very much. And I guess, Rachel, I'll give the ball back to you for questions. Mar yeah, Meryl, thank you very, very much okay. for that. And we do have some time for questions. Um, I've been seeing some popping up in the chat box as we've been going along, and they look like they've been answered. Um, but just as sort of a little review, there were some folks, uh, Katie was asking about um, seeing uh, the sections listed when you're going into, um, uh, when you're going to, uh, I'm sorry, I can't think, when you're like, trying to fill out the volunteer form. Um, and it is based in part on what things you are a member of at the time. So you can go ahead and add sections to your ACRL membership. And I think Kristen had mentioned that, you know, you can be a member of many different sections. So those are the sort of sections you will see to volunteer for. There's no point in volunteering for a section that you're not also currently involved in. Um, and Lenny also came in and asked about filling out the form um, for choosing any division level program because uh, Lenny wanted to be available for any that might show up. So how is that uh, selected? And um, Catherine, I think I got this right, but I want to check with you as well. If um, if one of us checks any division level program, uh, my understanding was that then that's the appointment committee has to step in um, and just see how that person best fits. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So that's the main goal of the ACRL appointments committee is to look at division level appointments. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So great. So yes, if you put in that you were like, you want to do any or all, um, then yes, there's going to be some human beings on the other side who are going to be like, well, we're going to see where we can put you. Um, but of course, if you haven't filled out the form yet, it's always really helpful to go in and sort of say, no, I really love to do these things. And that, that helps the committee say, put you in the right spot so that you're in a home that feels like home for you, a committee that's home for you. Um, any other questions that are out there? Oh, Katie did ask, can you add sections at any time to your membership? Um, I believe yes, um, but let me ask my, my cohort out there. Is that true? Can you add a section at, um, at any time? Hi, this is Mary Jane. I'm just jumping in here to say you can add sections and interest groups at no cost any time to your ACRL membership. Thank you, Mary Jane. Other questions that are out there? Okay, I am not seeing any more, nor am I hearing of any. Um, well, then I want to thank all of you uh, for attending today's webinar. Um, we are people who volunteer for ACRL, um, and we've gotten a lot out of it. And we hope that maybe over the course of this last 45 minutes or so that you've sort of felt that from us, that this is something that has been of value to us. Um, and that we do value and it's work that we value. So we want to hope we get that to you. We also hope that we made this process a little bit um, easier for you, um, <laughs> that maybe there's a little bit more understanding. Oh, um, it looks like there is a question that came up from Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Um, that says, is asking, I, I know that some committees are made up the chairs of other committees. Um, and that is, I believe somewhere at the executive level that is in fact happening, but I also know that on some committee, like for instance, our ACRL membership committee, there are folks who are in our committee who are in fact chairing other committees, and that is why they report to our committee. Um, and I know even from other work that I've done with ACRL, I, the first time I met uh, Catherine, I think I was actually because I ended up chairing one committee and that also put me into the legislative committee and I met a whole bunch of different new people. Um, <laughs> so yes, that is happening. You might be assigned, you might be volunteering for one, but in the act of leadership in that one position, it may also uh, push you into another committee as well. So the opportunities, there's, um, it's like you're still volunteering for the, the things that you want to volunteer, but it's actually the scope of what you're volunteering for is larger. But it also means that the um, the opportunities are larger and the networking increases like tenfold. It's amazing. Uh, Jody, who uh, one of our 
longstanding committee members uh, said that depending on what you were chairing, you may become ex officio um, on the advisory level committees from other for other committees. Um, and of course, that does vary by position. You know, appointments could be chair or member. Um, it could be, are you on a task force or a standing committee? And there's one, two, and three year appointments. So there's so much fluidity there. So thank you for that. Other questions? Oh yeah, ACL conference attendance, but you can't afford it. That is an excellent question. Um, and I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that one. That may be one of those um, checking with a committee to see what sort of um, representation they need. I know for one of my committees, there is it's written into the bylaws that we do meet in person. And we meet in person at midwinter and we meet in person at annual. Um, and so for instance, in that case, it would not be a good committee. But if uh, checking with the committee chairs, oh, and Jody says the same thing, check with the committee chair. There may be some other options that allow you access into that um, that don't require you to be there. So you might be a member who can be there, but maybe you're not the chair that year. This is, hi, this is Mary Jane. I'm the Associate Director of ACRL, and I just wanted to jump in and dispel the notion that there is an ALA requirement oh. um, around conference attendance if you're a member of the committee. And there is um, certainly at the ACRL level absolutely no requirement that committees have to meet face-to-face -face once or two times a year. In fact, I would say um, the instruction section, as an example, has gone entirely virtual, and they're no longer, I think, having any meetings face-to-face. -face. So many committees, most committees, actually work virtually year-round. And um, so let me just put that out there, because by and large, um, um, especially at the ALA and other division levels, um, there's no requirement that you have to come to conference. Mary Jane, thank you for that. That's excellent information. Other questions out there? Okay. We're going to leave the chat window open just for a bit. Um, you will also see that uh, we will be asking about an evaluation to see if this was helpful to you, this webinar. Um, we do ask that you to take some time to give that back to it, give us back a little bit so that we can tweak this for the next year's um, webinar when we go ahead and do this again. Um, and again, if you do have questions, you're welcome to reach out to me um, at minkinr at lab.msu.edu. Uh, you can ask any of the folks or you know on who are on this committee. Um, you can reach out to Mary Jane and company and Mariel because they are there also to help answer these sorts of questions and help to keep your volunteer experience going well. Um, any last minute questions? Anything else that we can answer for you at this time? Oh, is anyone able to provide me with brief instructions on how to add a section to the membership without renewing it? Um, you know what, uh, Katie, I might be able to do that once we get off this call, because I think I need to look at it on the screen, otherwise I will forget <laughs> how to do that. Um, but yes, we can go ahead and totally help you with that. Katie, if you want, you can shoot me an email at minkatr at lib.msu.edu, and um, that way I'll have your email and we can walk through it. Okay, and hearing no more questions, thank you very, very much for your participation today, and I hope that we will be working together very shortly. Thank you, everyone.